Okay, so I just got back. I went, went out and took some photographs of campus. Uh, and I just got back, so I'd like to download the card and sort of walk you through my basic workflow. Uh, this is a workflow I do every single time. I am constantly rigorous about this. I'm always, I always do this process before I even look at the photographs. And so every single time I come back, I start with my basic workflow. Before I start messing with the photographs, I don't even look at them. I don't do anything until I've done this. And I'd like for you guys to mimic me in this because good workflow practices means that I don't lose things. And when I shoot a lot of photographs, and I do, I shoot a lot of images every, every day, every month, uh, I wanna make sure that I don't lose stuff in the future. So first thing I do, I pop open the car, card reader, pull out the card, make sure and close that back up so dust doesn't get into my camera. Now that I have the card, okay, so I'm gonna plug the card into the back of the computer. You'll see that it, here that it pops up on the desktop and it's, uh, in this case, it's called EOS Digital. I'm gonna double click on that. And then inside that folder, there's a folder called DCIM. And inside that folder, there is a folder called 100 EOS 5D, which is the identifier for my camera. So first thing I ever do, before I do anything else is I grab this 100 EOS 5D folder and I drag that to my desktop. And I wait for this to copy over and you'll actually see that I'm copying a video over uh, onto my hard drive, just ignore that second video. And you'll see that it's a two minute process. Now, it would be faster if I'd used my USB 3 card reader as opposed to uh, using the, the back of the computer. The, back, the card reader in the back of the computer is a little bit slower, uh, and so you might want to, uh, here's, the, a, here's a, the opportunity to use something that would be a little bit faster. Okay, so now that my card has been, uh, our images have been copied over onto the desktop, first thing I, or the next thing I do is I want to rename this folder just to get, just to give it a unique file name. So for, I hit enter and that allows me to uh, that allows me access so that I can rename it, or I can right click on the folder and then click rename. I prefer to just hit enter, it's a little bit easier. So my nomenclature, which is the method of naming that I use, is the date in which the, th the images were shot. So in this case, it is the 27th, July 27, 2017, so I would uh, type 072717-1. It's a lot of sevens today. Uh, it's July 17th, and then I, after that, I use an underscore, so shift dash gives me an underscore. So shift dash, and then I give it a unique name of what I shot. So in this case, uh, Northwest Vista Campus, so I would say NVC underscore campus, C-A-M-P-U-S. So I click off of that and now that renames the folder. So then I can double click that and I see that my images are all here. Uh, sometimes, just sometimes, I will come over and I'll click on show path bar. And if, I, if you see the path bar, then you can see that I took 134 images today while I was out shooting. And I go back and I double check that against my uh, against my card to make sure that I have 134 pictures in both places. And the reason I do that is sometimes these computers, like the, the connection between the card and the computer can uh, get messed up and it's just good to double check that you have all of your information transferred over so that you don't lose anything. So now that I have my images uh, transferred over onto my computer, I have my folder renamed. Uh, just because I know my procedure, I'm gonna go ahead and copy my file name. So I can click in here and then uh, go down and click copy just to get it into my clipboard. And then I can grab one of, my one of my images and drag it to the Adobe Bridge CC 2017 icon. And that loads all of my images into Adobe Bridge. Now Bridge is a good program if you want to quickly rename and add metadata to your images, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click quickly, just rename, add a little metadata, and then start looking at my, all of my images to see if I like any of them, if I don't like any of them. I can quickly narrow it down 
just to the select three or four, maybe even five, that I find that I really like and I want to do something with. Okay, so now that all of these images are loaded into Bridge, we can see here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen that we have 134 items in, in this folder. Uh, the next thing I'd want to do is I'd want to select all, which the easiest way to do that is to, is to press on the keyboard uh, Command A or Edit, Select All. Right there, Command A. After I have everything selected, then I want to rename all of those images together so that if they ever get misplaced, I know exactly where they should go. So I would come over to Tools, Batch Rename, and that will bring up the Batch Rename dialog box. Okay, so there's, obviously there's a, a lot of information in this dialog box, and I, I want to sort of pick it apart. And like every, well, like all Adobe products, uh, it's built on sort of an American or a Western civilization idea of top to bottom, left to right. Uh, or, I'm sorry, left to right, top to bottom. So we start at the top. It says presets, default. Uh, just basically, if we had a preset, we could load it, and then it would just overwrite everything else. So we just ignore this for right now. Presets. Uh, the next one is we want to uh, rename in the same folder. That's correct. We want to rename these, these, these same items. Uh, so leave that clicked. And then we will have just text. This is where I will press Command V, which gives us the paste uh, the paste function, which it pastes my uh, Northwest Vista campus information folder name that I, I copied earlier. And then I'll remove the date out of that because you don't want your, your file names getting too long. Then I can uh, click on these minus buttons to have information go away that I don't necessarily want. I leave the text, I like an underscore, uh, I like using underscores as opposed to dashes or spaces because, uh, well, because it's because I'm really old. Uh, and I learned how to do web, web imaging uh, when spaces and dashes really mattered as opposed, to, uh, as opposed to underscores. So after that, I'm going to click on current file name down here and change this to number suffix. And so now I see Northwest Vista Campus underscore current number suffix. And then... Uh, I want to preserve, uh, I don't want to preserve the file name for XMP metadata, and I do want to enable this uh, for Windows and Unix uh, platforms. After that, I can double check the preview, Northwest Vista Campus uh, 9203-CR2. Uh, that looks really correct, so then I'm going to hit rename. And you'll see that it makes the images go away, but now they're going to pop back up, and now each one has the correct file name with it. And we want to make sure that we still have 134 selected here. Oh, it went away, so I'm going to select all again. And then I'm going to come to File Info. File, File, Info. Now, file information, uh, this is basic, basic stuff, but uh, this will help me archive my images later. And if I do it all at the very beginning, when I still am fresh with what I have shot, uh, it's a lot easier than doing it uh, a month or two months down the road when I'm trying to archive all this stuff later. So now that I have the dialog box open, we have a whole bunch of stuff we want to cover, and, and uh, most of it you don't need. So let's just get rid of stuff that you don't need. So to do that, if we hover on the right side of these tabs, we're going to see that we have the ability to uh, press an X, which will close out that tab. So I'm going to close out the IPTC tab, Close out the IPTC extension tab. Close out the camera data, the camera data tab. GPS data, close out. Video data, close out. Video data, come on, close it out. There we go. Uh, audio data, close out. Swift data, close out. Categories, close out. I'll leave the origin tab, and then I'll go to uh, DCOM or DICOM. Close that out. History, close it out. Advanced, close it out. And raw data, close it out. Now, all I have left is the description information and the origin information. These are the only two tabs that I ever fill out. So now that we have the, now that we have the file information box open and we have the description and the origin tab uh, are the only ones that are left, uh, we need to start with the document title. And the document title needs to be something like Northwest Vista 
campus or Northwest Visto walkabout or something very simple that we can clearly get to what we're trying to get at. Uh, author, that should be Tom Turner, and, and author title, photographer. Photographer is always my favorite title. The description needs to be something really clear and, um, and straightforward. So in this case, I'm going to describe what's going on. Uh, cactus flower images of Northwest Vista College campus on um, Thursday, July 27th, uh, 2017. And I always put in here photo by Tom Turner, you know, because that's my name, and I want to have, want to make sure that I get credit for for every time I, uh, I make an image. Okay, so the next thing that we need to think about is the keyword section, and the keywords I usually put five keywords into the keyword section. If you click on it, uh, you can just go ahead and enter the words, and we want to separate each word by a semicolon or a comma. Uh, I prefer semicolons just because that's what happens with, uh, uh, that's what Bridge likes naturally. So let's go ahead and put in our first keyword of Northwest Vista. Okay, and then nature, because most of these are nature photographs. NVC, that's uh, you know the Northwest Vista College acronym. Uh, oh, let's go back real quick and change that. Okay. Then we have Northwest Vista College. Pretty much I want to have anything I might search these images by uh, as a global idea. And then, you know, let's maybe go with walkabout. Walkabout is sort of the idea for the first assignment. So I like this uh, as, a, as a keyword. And that gives us five keywords, and so now we have a total of, of, the, five, of the five basic keywords that are applied to all of the images uh, in here. Okay, let's go down to copyright status, and so we want to make sure that it's copywritten, so we click the button uh, where it says unknown, and we want to click that to say copywritten. Okay, and then copyright notice, uh, we want to change this from just the generic thing that's in the camera to uh, a copyright symbol. So the copyright symbol, the way I get there is by pressing Alt or Option G on a Mac. And uh, it's really straightforward, Option G. Uh, and then I hit Space and then type in 2017 backslash Tom Turner Photography. Nope, oh, can't spell my name. Okay, so now that I have that set up, I want to put in my copyright URL, which basically that's the URL of the, uh, e or of the website that is owned by the photographer so they can get a hold of me. So put in here Tom Turner Photography. Okay. So then we're going to go up to the origin tab, and we only need to fill out about half of this page on the origin tab. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, date created, and we don't want to fill that out at all. We want to leave that where the original value is. Then we come down to city, and we're going to change that to San Antonio. Okay, go down to state, and that will be Texas. Country, USA. And then we have credit and source. Now, the difference between credit and source is credit is who is uh, who took the photograph, who gets credit for it, and source is who gets paid or, or who owns the image. So Tom Turner is the credit, and the source is Tom Turner Photography. Okay, so we just click OK. And now we have all of these images uh, have, have metadata, have the basic metadata applied to them. And we just want to make sure that we leave headline and instructions. We just leave that stuff blank. Click OK. OK, so 
first thing we want to do, or the next thing we want to do, is I want to sort of walk you through uh, adding specific keyword information to each of the images. Uh, so we, the first thing we want to do is we want to click the first image in the sequence of, of uh, images here. In this case, we have the cactus images. So click the first one, hold the shift button down, and then click the last one. And that will uh, select a group of images. And now we have them selected. We're going to go up to File, Info, File, File, Info, or press Command-I. Okay, so go back over to description, and now we can add in cactus and green as part of our keywords. So we're going to do this again with the uh, flower images here. Now we have 34 selected. Uh, so we're going to go to File Info. And we're going to type in flower orange. And we're going to see, oop, I misspelled it. This is always something we have to think about. So sometimes I go back and I use Word to spell check my, my keywords because it's very important that uh, all, of the, all of the keywords are spelled properly because what happens later when I try to uh, find these images and they aren't keyworded properly, uh, it's very difficult to track something down if it's not spelled correctly. So uh, I will often use a word processing program such as Word to double check my spelling. And we see here that orange is spelled with an A and it auto-corrected, that's good. So I can just click on this and then paste it back into, um, back into Bridge. Okay. I also might want to add in yellow because that's also a color that's in these photographs that's quite prevalent. Okay, last little bit. So, click OK. And then we have these three little images left at the back, and I just want to go ahead and delete those. So. Now that we have all of our images properly keyworded, um, let me just give you a quick tour of the interface here in Bridge. Uh, first thing, you know, like every program that Adobe puts out, it usually runs uh, left to right, top to bottom. So. Starting here at the top, we have the favorites and the folders. Uh, these are basically your navigation, where you find your images at. And then you go down to this filters and collections uh, area. Uh, and basically in this section, this is where we want to filter out and just select some of our photographs. And so I usually keep the filters and the folders open when I'm looking at images. Uh, then we have the contents, which is all of our images. And you can see here that I have 131 images selected. Then we have the preview um, window, which is basically gives us, a, gives us a larger preview. And then we have the metadata uh, panel, which will tell us all of the camera settings that were used when each, each of these images were made. Now, I don't use the essentials layout very much. Uh, and that's what this is. This is the essentials layout. It's the default layout. Uh, in Bridge, and I don't use this, this layout very much. The layout I do use a lot is the film strip layout. And so let's click on that. And you can see here that when I click on that, it sort of dramatically sort of pushes everything aside and I don't have so much stuff on my, on my screen. Um, what I do have on my screen is the favorites in the folders, which is nice, and then the filters, which is nice, and I like those. The collections, I don't use collections, so I'm just gonna right click on that and close it. And I really don't use favorites, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Some of the things I do use is I will add the metadata folder or the metadata panel up here uh, next to the folders. And so I can click between those so I can see my camera settings. And so I have folders, metadata, and filters. And it, what's good about Bridge is it will remember this setup. And so every time I open it, this is the setup I'll use. Um, 
So, and then I have a con the contents film strip, and then I have the big, the big preview here, the big window preview, um, nice and large, so I can see if my images are sharp, I can look at the uh, quality of the image, and I can make a decision on them. So I can navigate through this by pressing the left and right arrow key on my keyboard. Now that I have the, uh, all of my images sort of selected and pulled out, uh, I can go ahead and really select individual images that I like. Uh, and the way I do that in Bridge is I use a star rating system. And a star rating system starts with one star and then goes to five stars. And just like when you were in kindergarten, the more stars you get, the better it is. So I'm gonna give, if I find an image I like, like let's just say this image here, I'm going to press Command-1 to give that a one star rating. Uh, I can also do that by hovering over these, um, these little five dots, and I could give that, a, and then click on one of the dots, the number of stars that I wanna give it a rating at. And so the way I look at it is we, all, we start with one star. Everything gets a one star when it does something good, right? And then we'll narrow that down again to, to just the one stars, and then the two stars will get rated and then the three stars will get rated out of that. And so it's just like a little pyramid or a triangle that you have to sort of uh, scale. You have to get you know, higher and higher. Okay, so as we're moving through these, let's get that a one star, command one, command one. Oh, those are nice and bright. Command one. Wonderful. So every time I'm pressing Command-1, it gives that, that image a one-star rating. And basically, all that, it, all that it matters is that I see potential in this image. Like, is there potential there, uh, or is there not? Stuck this butterfly for a while. Still not necessarily happy with the butterfly images. I was using a, something called bracketing here where I'd shoot one stop above and one stop below. In fact, it was actually two stops above and below on, this, uh, on the library. And that way I could really see what the exposure was like uh, or, or guess at the right exposure here to make sure that I got everything in gamut. Okay, so I have the images selected. You see here that out of 131 photos, I have 18 that are one stars. And if I click on that, it'll just, in this, on the star rating, it'll give me just those 18 that are selected. And I can come back to the very beginning, and now I can give things two star ratings. If I like, you know, I have to decide between this image and that image, right? And they're very similar, but, you know, they have a slightly different angle. So I'm going to press Command-2 this time when I make a decision. Okay, I'm going to give this image a, a two-star, and then you see it disappears. Let's just make sure it click it re so it reappears so I can see what's going on. And you'll see sometimes the two-stars, it's like really easy to identify that, that this is a two-star, well, these aren't, right? It's really simple to identify that because of that slight shift, and now there's separation between the, um, the pestles or the stamen, I don't know, the plant stuff, <laughs> those little twigs that are sticking out of the top, you see that there are, um, you see that there's now separation and so that makes that a two-star image where the one before it was a one-star image because it overlapped.